to talk, get a stream under our belt, talk about some interesting things. Uh, before we get too far, though, I want to throw it to you, man. Tell okay. me a little about, about yours. How did you get T-shirted historian, the T-shirted one, as your nickname? Well, uh, as it happens, uh, I do actually have a degree in history. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not just a cute moniker. And um, the fact of the matter is I'm a big guy, and I really find T-shirts to be comfortable. I've never enjoyed button-downs. And uh, even though, you know, RPG Pundit uh, has criticized me for <laughs> for wearing t-shirts you know his his opinion is you know grown men shouldn't wear t-shirts especially not academics i'm like well okay but that's just your like your opinion you know man so i'm not growing up man i'm wearing t-shirts too actually it was funny because right. i didn't do a count but i can tell you this i wear t-shirt first off my my job has changed we can we continue to pretend that we'll go back to normal but i went work in healthcare. i'm not sure if i ever get a new normal again but they haven't reinstated dress code. So I still get to wear a t-shirt to work. My wife had done a count when we were packing them away. Cause I have over 30 t-shirts just for Christmas. So I wear a different t-shirt every day. Same. So I am uh, in the t-shirt uh, club affinity. I don't know what we should call ourselves. We got to come up with aficionados. Maybe you're like a t-shirt aficionados. I love it. Go. I'm a connoisseur. This is my, well, this is my, this is my work ones really because science. There you go. Gotta, yeah, love see, I, gotta love up Muppets. Yeah, I, I work at a job that also uh, allows me to dress casual because um, we get into situations where, uh, you know, you, you you know, it's not exactly good to have a suit and tie on when you're having to deal with uh, some of the stuff that I deal with. But no, uh, I'm with you there. I don't think teachers need to be uh, all buttoned up like that. I think it's silly. Uh, let me ask a bit about your transition as a teacher um into being a youtuber and a youtuber mm -hmm. talking about because you're really into gaming some things that i'm not sure which is why i really enjoy uh some of your stuff got I, 140 hours of Elden ring we're going to get to that because wow i think that's awesome. i think uh i think actually i'm a little over that now to, oh, let me check I my current stats right here uh <laughs> this is an amazing game though i gotta give everybody credit for finding we everybody get finding stuff good stuff i'm all about good stuff can we find good stuff so i awesome. i apparently as of as of this morning, I'm 154.9 hours into it. <laughs> 154. He's a few minutes below 155. How did you uh, transition into? Hey, listen, I'm going to do this YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. Uh well, let's see. Um, our friends and I basically we started watching uh, Doomcock because we thought he was hilarious and informative, and we also discovered Nerdrotic. And the more we started watching the live streamers, uh, the more we enjoyed them. And eventually, up on Twitter, uh, a presence by the name of Fat Steven Seagal yes, made himself has. known. And uh, as it happens, I'm an actual student of Steven Seagal. Oh, all the right. actual one. Yeah. Um, now that's not to say yes, I know Steven Seagal personally. Uh, I trained at his dojo, at his Tension Dojo, under his top student Haruo Matsuoka, Matsuoka Sensei. And uh, so I, I did train Aikido there for a while. And um, so, yeah, I got into talking to Fat Steven and I said, uh, I was telling him, I was like, yeah, I know that I, you know, I've, I've actually trained in, under the real Steven Seagal, you know, through his uh, top student. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah. He says, well, you know, I don't know any Aikido or anything like that. He says, I, you know, I'm obviously not the real Steven Seagal. I said, yeah, I know you're obviously not the real Steven Seagal. I know about the real Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, That's awesome, uh, though. He, That's awesome. That because I think neurotics has proven to be a gateway for so many folks, right? Gary, Gary, and now the circle of basically the FNT crowd, right? So then you have as and geeks and gamers and a lot of the folks they bring in, it's become this like bubble that has exploded finally, where you rewind the clock and it was like slowly simmering, but then somewhere in the last, maybe right before COVID, but then definitely during COVID, it has like a mushroom cloud exploded. Do you, do you agree with that assessment? I think so. Uh, actually, yeah. I I followed as for years during his before. gaming time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I first uh, started tuning into him way back when he was doing uh, World of Warcraft coverage. Um, probably right around Mists of Pandaria. So when when he actually started when he collided with Nerd Roddick and everybody else, I was just ecstatic, crazy about it. I thought, oh, this is so awesome. 
And a son of a bitch still hasn't shown up on my show yet. So. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, it's okay. Might, One day. They might, they might be getting too big for us. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to catch up a little bit, I guess. So mm -hmm. uh, all of the uh, links are in the uh, description there. So you can uh, connect to the t-shirted one because it is some good stuff folks um then the uh, weekend uh this week the week in geek uh was a great right. panel of folks uh talk about some different topics and different and just having fun man just having fun loving it so uh yeah i think that uh, many of us have kind of had that sort of gateway thing i know for me because um i come from a completely different background of you know radio and writing and working for different websites and all that kind of nonsense and then it's like and I do remember the last Jedi thing for me, because I remember thinking, I remember coming out of it, and it was a weird screening. I'll tell you, it's one of the weirdest screens I'd ever been to. I've been with a friend of mine, and there was no noise at all. Like Sometimes there's laughter and whatever, but it was just a critics only, maybe a dozen to 20 people, no applause, nothing. It just ends cold, quiet. And I was like, well, I kind of liked it, but I, and then, so I was talking with my friend driving back. He was my plus one. And it was like the list of problems just kept growing as I thought about it. Because there's no way to have a second viewing, right? You're just like four days away from release. You're supposed to write a review. And you're like, oh, my gosh, I this was this was a mess. This was a mess. This was, So in hindsight, it's like, okay, it really was a gateway drug for me. I just kept trying to defend. Surely they have a plan. Surely the, it's a billion-dollar franchise. Billions of dollars are on the line. You're not going to screw up my Star Wars. You're sure. I better defend it to my son. My son was out. He was done. My son saw it. And I just know over time, it was like one thing after another. And then, then I, um, during the pandemic for me, and this is when I really exploded into finding all the YouTubers and things like that was I wanted to revisit comic books and stuff like that. And I could not believe how bad it was. I could not believe how crazy this it was. This is Kevin Murphy from Rift Tracks and Mystery Science Theater 3000. Hey, this is Mark from Casting Crown. Hey, this is Alan Powell from the film The Song. Hey, this is Christian Kane. This is Colin Mockery. Hello, everybody. This is Ione Singleton, a.k.a. T-Dog from The Walking Dead. And you are listening to my main man, Brandon. 